The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Alberta Grains, CNM Seeds, and Syngenta Canada. Find more episodes of The Wheat School by going to wheatschool.com. Peter Johnson at WheatPete, realagriculture.com, and oh gosh, this hurts a lot. So we are late August here at Woodstock, Ontario, and we're coming up to wheat planting season, and you should all be saying, why is Wheat Pete not excited? We're in the wheat planting season. Dang it. I'm going to talk about broadcasting wheat seed into standing soybeans. And if there isn't anything else that says, eh, wheat doesn't need much help, it's that we can broadcast seed into standing soybeans and actually get a good crop. So that part hurts because I want you to treat wheat like a real crop. On the other hand, I want you to grow wheat and I want you to have a great wheat crop. And believe it or not, standing soybeans are a great place to try broadcasting wheat. Now, be careful because we know that seeding wheat with a drill, and in fact, the latest data is pushing us even with narrower rows with the drill. The high yield growers are now starting to say five inch spacings with a drill. And so precision technology still has a place. But if you have green as grass soybeans on the 1st of September, and a particularly if you move further north in the province, I mean, gosh, if you're at Windsor, then who cares, because we can seed wheat with the drill on the 15th of October and still have amazing wheat. But man, if I'm up in Bruce County, Gray County, I'm in the shorter season areas, it's September 1st, I, got, I have green as grass soybeans. I am gonna plant wheat too late if I wait to plant with the drill. And why would I do that? So can I broadcast wheat into soybeans and get an excellent crop? Well, man, Mark at Napanee this year, 161 bushel per acre wheat broadcast into soybeans. So it can work. There are some concerns. So first off, it's kind of cool. I had an agronomist the other day say, sorry, Pete, we like broadcast wheat. We might sell the drill. I know this is new technology. Whoa, wait a minute. This is the third time through broadcast wheat in my career. I cut my teeth way back in the late 70s. We were flying wheat into standing soybeans with the airplane. What took us out? It was slugs. So some things we've learned along the way. First off, seeding rate. When a seed broadcast into standing soybeans, we need to increase our seeding rate. I generally say 25% above standard. So even up to 2.5 million seeds per acre. Again, Market Napanee left me a message, said, Pete, if I go to 2.5, I lodge my early seeded wheat into the soybeans. I'm at 2, 2, 1, 2, 2. So we know we need more seed because normally we'd be at 1, 5. And it'll depend on your soil type, but lodging is a definite issue because remember, the wheat seeds on the soil surface, and that means that all the roots are above the soil, they're not in the ground. And so lodging is a concern, play with seeding rate, learn where it shakes out, somewhere between two, 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 five million seeds per acre is where we want to be. And pick a variety that has good lodging resistance if you can at all, because man, it's gonna be lodging prone and it's root lodging. Nothing we can do about that. Pick a variety with good standability. Next, what about the soybean crop? We used to say, back when we did it in the late 70s, early 80s, man, it was all about 10% leaf drop on the soybeans. That is too late. Slugs took us out. Well, you know, if you get to 10% leaf drop in the soybeans, and, and by the way, this has been a wet summer in Ontario. Holy smack, and I am really worried about slugs. Because with wet weather and lots of growth in the soybeans, the, the slug population is through the roof. But if the soybean leaves are still green, I walk cornfields these days, I'm finding slugs and snails up on the fifth, you know, halfway up to the, to the tassel on those corn leaves. If the soybean leaves are still green and attracted to the slugs, maybe they'll leave the wheat seed alone. So we wanna be out there broadcasting into these soybeans 
before any leaves have dropped. In fact, if you see you know, one or two yellow leaves at the bottom of the canopy, it's time to go. Or if we get into September and you're in Bruce County, it's time to go. Just go get it done. Couple of other quick notes. Treated seed. I wanna use treated seed if I can because I'm worried about bunt diseases in the wheat. But I don't want any treated wheat seed in my soybean sample. So make sure that you broadcast into that soybean crop when the foliage is dry. If you do it with dew, man, the dew will stick those seeds to the leaf and that is all bad. We don't wanna do that last. Try to do it on fields with decent soil test because man, we know that if I have a five for phosphorus and I try to grow wheat without starter phosphorus, I can give up 30, 30 bushels per acre. On the other hand, if I have an 18 or a 20 for phosphorus, I give up three. So we can't get fertilizer right with the wheat seed when we broadcast, but if we pick the right field, I think we've got a real chance. So there you have it. Can broadcast seed into soybeans work? Absolutely. But if, you're, if it's early enough, like man, if you've got edible beans that are already turning yellow, save it for the drill because that's a more consistent program. Peter Johnson at Wheat Pete, realagriculture.com. Whatever you do, grow great wheat.